Yeah, well, I haven't seen Dave Sims that excited since he was making <laughs> jump shots for the old 66ers in <laughs> high school in, in uh, Chavo basketball 20 years ago. And, boy, he uh, can shoot. There you have it with Mr. That was exciting. Give us a little sense. Now, we don't know if we have home games yet. We'll do that in a second. But give me a little sense of what this means for the Seattle sports fan. They love the Mariners. Oh. The Seahawks are competitive, but they're not a big-time team. Forget the Kraken. And here they are. They're in the postseason. Give me a little feel of that first. The Mariners are it, Chris, flat out. I mean, you're talking 20 years since the last playoff. This is huger than huge, as the kids would say. I mean, it's just remarkable. And to have the drama, and look at that crowd. I mean, you couldn't, we probably could, we could have sold 100,000 tickets that night. And to have Cal win it just like the games you play in your backyard, right? Uh, You know, bottom of the ninth. 3-2, 3-2, you need a big run, and Cal Raleigh, who has been extraordinary in the second half, the Mariners as a team have been extraordinary in the second half, especially since August 1, and hit more home runs than anybody in the American League, and Cal, and that's his best side, the left side, uh, he's a switch hitter, and that's where most of his home runs have come from. Look at the joy there. I mean, are you kidding? Explosion of noise, of screaming. I, I saw people in the elevator when I finally got out of the building an hour, hour and a half later, I said beer was being thrown up in the air. People were hugging each other, didn't know each other. I mean, they were just hugging, kissing the whole thing. And I went down afterwards, and it was a wild scene. And I've been in a few wild scenes in my career. But this was a good one. This was a good one. And Scott Service did a terrific job. The boys came back after they did the champagne uh, shower. And he came back, and he addressed the crowd and said, hey, we couldn't do it without you. But right now, let's party. And that's what they did, man. Look at that. Fireworks. Yeah, look at that. I mean, it was a big-time celebration. I mean, that's a lot of uh, frustration and angst and and uh, disappointment flushed away and building forward with that moment by uh, provided by Cal Raleigh. And, of course, two out of three last weekend of the year, last year to the Angels, so they could have obviously could maybe yeah. have played a wild-card playing game. Now they do have a tiebreaker against Toronto. They're one back. Are they, go- are they going to be motivated this week at home against the Tigers? They play four, Blue Jays three in Toronto and Baltimore, and the Blue Jays are going to lose the game. The Orioles are pesky. Blue J- the Orioles are going to beat them once, but that means Seattle's got a sweep. Will they be motivated to do that to get the wild card series in their ballpark? That's the least of your worries, being motivated. They, we want The Mariners want the wild card hosting duties – as badly as anybody could want anything. Because if you saw that you just showed the clip of the fans in Seattle at T-Mobile Park on Friday night, double or triple that if we get a chance to host on Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Forget about it. I'll be, I mean, motivation is the least of your worries. And Julio's coming back. He's been battling a back problem. He's back in the lineup today. And hopefully, you know, he's going to get – he's had tons of uh, preparation and – you know, physical therapy, et cetera, et cetera. He's, he's the engine offensively that makes it happen. He and Eugenio Suarez. And the excitement and the joy that this kid brings, his abilities, I mean, it's, it speaks for itself. So he'll be in center field, and we can't wait. We're looking forward to tonight's game against Detroit. Swept Detroit, blew them out at their place uh, back in August. And uh, hey, the fellas going to be ready to rock and roll starting tonight. No question about it. I didn't like I didn't like the game yesterday. Do I just throw it out the window when they got buried? Yeah, should take yeah. on out against the yeah. A's. Uh, we, uh, Mike Blowers and I kept saying, you know, baseball happens. <laughs> That's baseball. That's one of those things. I mean, you're playing against a professional team. You got a bunch of kids over the A's with uh, what they've done to that team. That's a whole nother, whole nother conversation. But you got a bunch of hungry kids over there. And you know, Robbie wasn't on his wasn't on point yesterday. Robbie Ray. But he's been solid for us this year, and I look for him to be uh, the number two starter uh, in the series when we get wherever we play uh, this weekend, whether it be here or Toronto or wherever. Uh, and I would assume Castillo in game one. Who would go game three, Gilbert or Gonzalez? Uh, Gilbert? I, right now, I don't know. I, I would say I'd prob- I'm thinking Gilbert or Kirby will be in there, but everybody's ready to roll, everybody. And, and Luis will be the lead guy, I mean. He's got presence. He's got good stuff. He beat uh, Oakland a couple of days ago after they had, they had really teed off on him in two previous encounters this season. Pitching, starting pitching, bullpen, uh, that's a big part of the success of this ball club in addition to hitting all the home runs, particularly since August 1. 
Well, now listen, uh, here's what you, the, the Mariners are going to have to prove to us that they can do. It's one thing to get into the playoffs and get all excited, but that playoff situation can last 10 minutes. I've been there millions oh, no. of times with my old Giants. they got to show that they belong in the playoffs and be very competitive in that first round. Do you expect that? I, I think they're going to be ready to rock, Chris. I really do. I, don't, I know first-time-itis can be a factor in the playoffs in any professional sport, heck, even in college. But I think these guys, are they're ready. I mean, they've, they've been through so much. They were 29 and 39 at one point, and they battled back, and here they are in the playoffs. If that doesn't show some grit, some guts, some perseverance, some ability, uh, talent, togetherness, et cetera, et cetera, I mean, I, I don't know what more I can tell you. Excellent point. 10 under 516 over now. That will be a very, very good series, Seattle and Toronto. I'm 100% with oh, you. You're pitching tremendous. against their hitting. That will be a good series. Yeah. Very good series. Yeah, for sure. For You're sure. The best. And keep, then, on not, keep on – go ahead. Finish up. No, I was going to say, we're, we're, we're just jacked out of our minds here in Seattle. I mean, it's – you know, when you wait this long and to have it – I mean, I, I woke up Friday mor uh, Saturday morning going, wow, we're in the playoffs. We're in the playoffs. This is real. And that's what everybody's saying. And the excitement is so palpable. It's just remarkable. Everybody's got uh, playoff fever. Waited too daggone long. But now it's here. And now they got to make the most of it. And, and all the guys tell me, Scott Service talks about it, Jerry DePoto and on down. It's not about making the playoffs. It's about getting to the World Series. And, you know, you got to think big. You got to think big. And then you try to make it happen. Good job, Dave. Well done for you. You've been here a long time and hanging in there well. Always a pleasure to talk. Thanks so much here today. All right, my man. Good to see you, Chris. Thanks for the time and say hello to Alana for me.